We're a challenger brand, so we knock on the doors of CNN, of, of MTV, and we come along with, we have a different uh, viewpoint. You know, we're a bit salty. Uh, you know, we used to be called irreverent, you know. Uh, I don't know, we, we, we're called every name in the book by every uh, uh, company in the book, but, you know, generally, I, I believe every media uh, age has, has a changing of the guard, and right now it's Gen Y is the changing of the guard, and they have their own language. If we were to make a pie chart and say, you know, what are the different parts of the business, and, and where does your revenue come from, how would you define that? Well, in the past, it was definitely working with brands to create content. For example, with Intel, we partnered on the Creators Project, um, which has no other sponsors. Now it's happening, you know, we always say premium uh, online content. And what does that mean? And that's, I, I guess, why the HBO show was important to us, was because we wanted to take online content to the gold standard of TV and show that we could actually make stuff that was of, uh, you know, as good, if not better quality. Um, because for the longest time, online uh, content was synonymous with crap. And then sort of TV was less crap, and then there's the holy grail of films. So we wanted to show that we could do the gold standard. Now, since that's happened, um, we've been licensing a lot of our content that we make online to television, mobile in India, television in southeastern Europe, you know, basically licensing all over the place, which is a sort of a pure margin business. And then you really make this big push with Vice News, which gives you a seat at the table of, you know, the immediate things that are happening, more short form video, what's the cost that goes into that? Uh, we'll spend about $50 million over the next couple of years. Um, it started, we just launched, we're still in beta, we've only been up for two weeks. It's already been a tremendous success with our coverage of the Crimea, our coverage of uh, the riots in Venezuela. Um, our daily news capsule, um, you know, not only is it driving a lot of traffic for us, but it's also getting sort of kudos by mainstream media who hitherto have been no doing nothing but make fun of us. Would you have any interest in having essentially your own cable network to sort of be there for people to discover you in that way? Well, I would have said no um, up until recently, but we've been selling so much TV around the world. Uh, whenever we look at something, you know, we, we were doing so many parties in London, so many events that we bought a pub, and, uh, and we put all our events in the pub, and that pub became our most wildly successful adventure. And we're, we're selling so much TV and creating so much IP now that um, it's always smart to own your own platform if you can. So for us, we are looking at, at, at various opportunities because there is such a destratification going on in media right now, and we are throwing off a lot of cash that we can look at at buying distressed media uh, assets and then seeing if we can't turn them around. You are a profitable company. Mm -hmm. um, wh what does that mean? Does it mean you're a wildly profitable company? I mean, I would say for what we do, we're wildly p profitable. I mean, we've been profitable since day one because we came up in a recession and we believe, you know, you have to make profit or otherwise you don't exist. Well, we've been doubling our top line uh, pretty much every year that we've been in existence and which gets harder because there's a lot more zeros in there now. Um, and our margins have gone up. As we, as we are now licensing to mobile, uh, online, and TV around the world, as well as film, um, our margins are actually going up. So we're running at around a 34% margin. We're going to try to get to about 40, 44% next year, and then the ah, holy grail of 50% uh, for an online uh, company would be, would, be, would be huge for us. What do you think your company is worth? A lot. Um, I don't know. You know, we last year, you know, we got pegged at a billion and a half, and we've doubled since then. But we have a, a tremendous uh, scale growth that's going along with it. You know, if if we hit our numbers this year and and project out to next year, then you know our 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 worth would be you know exponential. I mean, if we if we're doing you know a billion dollars of top line at a fifty percent or close to a margin with an ever-increasing scale, that would be worth as much as Twitter, I would think, who are, you know, are a great company but not making any profit. You're close to generating a billion dollars in revenue? or That's the plan, yeah. Within the next, what? 12 to 18 months. 21st Century Fox bought a stake, about 5% mm -hmm. in your business, which got a lot of people talking about what you're worth. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was said that you and Rupert Murdoch celebrated by having a beer in Brooklyn? Is that... What no. <laughs> okay, uh, Thank you for clarifying. He, he 
he, what happened is we were discussing some form of deal and we were at his offices and he came in and, and he, we talked for a bit and I said, oh, you should come see the shop. And so he said, let's go now. So he came out to Brooklyn and we went to my favorite bar, the, the Hotel Del Mono, and we had, a, we had a drink. And then a lot of people saw us and he tweeted and that started a whole rumor and a lot of things. But uh, unrelated to that, the deal sort of, you know, took a life of its own. And then later on, we ended up doing this deal at, a, at around a 5% uh, ownership stake. I mean, I think a lot of people wonder about the corporate end game here. I mean, you've asked before, you know, do you want to sell this business? Um, I, I assume that you don't based on what you've said in the past. But, I mean, would you consider something like going public? Is that something that would interest you? Well, I think we have to look at everything now. Um, it's, it's a great question. One of the reasons why we did the Fox deal, people always say, well, why did you do a deal with Fox? One of the reasons why we did the deal with, with Fox was to stay independent. Um, and so we, that we could run uh, the business uh, the way we wanted to run. I, I vote 95% of the board. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a great deal for us. And, it's, and it's, it's helping us expand into the world, expand into India, expand into uh, Europe, et cetera, South America. However, that said, I think that you have to look at things. You know, if we hit the numbers that, you know, we, we believe we're going to hit, we're throwing off so much money, our scale is increasing so rapidly, we'd be stupid not to test what the market would bear. Um, there's a lot of money, you know, sloshing around the system. Obviously, valuations are high. God knows when the next recession is coming. And if we didn't take some money off the table, we'd go, ah, you know. What about you specifically as, you know, somebody who's also getting out and doing a lot of the storytelling, which mm. you've always done. You're doing a lot of, you know, a lot of the, um, the pieces that you might see online, that you might see on HBO. To me, it kind of feels like a, a Martha Stewart factor, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, as the brand, you know. Well, what do you think about that? Be, you know, your name isn't on the brand per se, but you are definitely a big part of this brand. Well, <clears throat> I always say, look, if you're going to make cars, you better love making cars. You know, if you're going to make grapple grommets, you better love making grapple grommets. We make content. Um, so, you know, you better love making content and you better know every aspect of making that content. A, B, you know, I'm not going to send anybody anywhere that I'm not going to go myself. Also, you know, I work for Vice, you know, I don't work for CNN or Fox or you know, MSNBC or any of the other, so I can do what I want. <laughs>